Hey, welcome to the short tutorial on how to turn your sketches into actual images and then into actual 3D models based off that image. And for that, we're gonna use 3DI Studio. I've went ahead and prepared a few sketches already. We're gonna start with that one. Um, we first need to go over to the image studio right here and then into the sketch section. And we can simply drag and drop the image in here. And then we have to describe what we want using the prompt field here. And we're gonna do Pixar character. And let's say Disney style maybe as well. Let's say we want uh, pastel colors. Let's say pastel colored, maybe soft lighting. You basically just describe in keywords what you want the actual image to look like. We're gonna reduce the amount of interference steps a bit. This should take a few seconds and I'll see you when it's done. And after a few seconds, this is what it generated. We can now go ahead and of course change the prompt. Let's say black and white close let's it generate again and as you can see you can kind of guide the image into a direction of how you want it to look like and we can now just play around with the settings with the prompt to kind of get an image which is to our liking I'm gonna now try one of the other sketches let's go ahead and try this one and let's say cute turtle let's also say we want it to be a pixar character so it gets the stylized um, let's also say Disney style and let's it generate again. We're gonna see what it looks like in a few seconds and I'll skip that and I'll see when it's done. And after like two to three seconds that got generated and as you can see that looks pretty much exactly like the actual sketch but with color. And you could also, for example, if the mouth isn't to your liking you can adjust the adapter conditioning which means how close does it stick to the actual image. Let's decrease the guidance scale a bit and let's generate again. And that should actually then stick to the image a bit better. Let's see how that comes out. It shouldn't take long, probably like two to three seconds. Yeah, and as you can see, that now gives us this image. And I, I absolutely I love this image. So we're, we're gonna use that for 3D generation in a bit. But let's try one of the other images to kind of show you how it works. Let's use this one. Let's say dragon heads. Pixar's character maybe, stylized. You could also say dark colors to kind of, maybe mystical, to kind of get a more mm, dark vibe, if that makes sense. So let's hit convert. And uh, that also should take like three to four seconds. Let's see how it looks when it's done. And it's done. Um, that actually doesn't look bad. Let's say, black and white skin and let's adjust the adapter conditioning and the guidance scale a bit like that let's hit convert again so we can kind of get a more smooth look without it being this detailed if it makes sense but yeah that looks way way better i like that a lot as you can see it's now a bit smoother on the skin it has better edges this looks great now let's go ahead with this one for example, you could use this, you sketched a weapon you want to generate an image of, or a 3D model even. Then you could use this sketch to turn your sketch first into an image and then into a 3D model. We're gonna go over to the 3D model part in a second. Let's just say Fantasy X Pixar style, Disney style, and Magical. Let's also generate or convert. And um, let's see how this comes out. And that's not bad as well. So um, let's just do the last one as well. That's this one. Die, cute, die now. Pixar style. Let's just convert again. And this is what it generates. So you can now also adjust the conditioning a bit so it sticks more to the image. You could reduce it so it gets kind of a bit more creative. And let's try this again. Or lower adapter conditioning scale. And that should give us a more creative look and let's see what it comes up with yeah that's definitely a bit more creative but as you can see it doesn't stick to the image quite well so we're gonna increase this again and hit convert again that's gonna be the last one then we're gonna go over to the 3d generation part i'm just gonna show you how this works yeah that's way way better so now we can go over to home this is where all our images have been saved and let's turn this one into a 3D model and let's turn 
this one into a 3D model. Um, let's go over to image to 3D. We're gonna use the beta model. And we can simply drag and drop the image into here. You can keep all options as is and let's simply hit generate. This takes about a minute or two and I'll skip to the part when it's done and I'll see you there. And after about a minute it has been generated as you can see, we now have a full 3D model of the image we just made from a sketch. And we can now go ahead and actually improve the textures. As you can see, there are some parts on the texture which don't fit the model quite well. So what you can do is go over to the paint item and 3D part. It loads the image into the 3D painter. Now we can go ahead and kind of, for example, let's say you want to improve the eyes. You can go over to, let's use the fast one. Let's improve the creative scale. Let's say, let's remove 3D hair. And let's say stylized um, turtle. Let's hit generate and this generates an image on the right which you can then use to paint over the textures on the left and improve the texture quality material quality fix bad spots like here i'll show it to you when the image has been generated that usually takes about 10 to 15 seconds depending on the settings you made as you can see that generated a new image you can now go ahead and paint this on here and if you don't like, for example, those artifacts, you can put them into the negative prompt you don't want in the image. And you can now go ahead and paint on here as well. Paint on here. Basically, you can paint whatever you want. You could also improve it here. And maybe let's reduce the brush strength. Kind of get a smoother, smoother look. Let's just paint the right side for now. So you can kind of see the difference. Right here. All right. And let's just compare. As you can see, you can basically paint a lot of detail into the eyes, the skin. And this is like a super sick tool if you kind of want to improve the texture quality. And now you can save to home, export. You can also change the resolution. And of course, you can play around with other AI models. But for now, let's go ahead and try the other image we made. And let's also hit generate here. We can actually do PBR textures, which generates normal maps, roughness maps, and metallic maps. But that's to shade it here because that's faster pbr takes about a minute or two longer and so let's generate and i'll skip to the part when it's done and after about a minute that has been generated and as you can see we now have a 3d model of the x you can now go ahead and redo the image as that probably isn't optimal for the 3d generation and if we click on the image we can actually maybe see why if we scroll in there isn't a lot of detail so the actual AI generation, it's hard for it to kind of differentiate between what's background and what's not. So in that case, I would suggest you use the integrated upscaling tool to upscale the image and then try the 3D generation as well. But in my opinion, it came out pretty well. You could use this workflow for assets, for characters, basically anything you can imagine you can use for weapons, for game assets, for anything. It's, it's super dope. And the integrated texture AI is perfect for redoing textures, improving textures in general. Yeah, I hope this was helpful. And um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And I'll see you guys soon.